It's Song Talk Radio. Welcome to Song Talk Radio, the show with songwriters talking to other songwriters about the craft of songwriting. We share tips, tools, and techniques, and together we all become better at writing songs. I'm your host, Neil Modi, and with me, my co-host, Phil Emery. How you doing, Phil? I'm, uh, I'm starting to feel a bit spooky, frankly. Spooky, because Halloween's coming up. Halloween is coming up, and I think, um, yes, I'm going to be giving out candy, so looking forward to that. Nice. Can I have some? No. Oh. <laughs> I think it's... I can send it to you, but you probably wouldn't get you wouldn't get it until after Halloween. Actually. You'd be a little squished. Yeah. Like, have got here, I would think. <laughs> All right. And uh, in the guest spot tonight, we have uh, Toronto-based singer-songwriter Greg Wired. How are you, Greg? I'm good. Thanks for having me again. Great to have you on the show. And uh, for everyone else, uh, please send your comments and questions, too, at Song Talk Radio on Facebook or Instagram, or feedback at songtalk.ca for the e- email. And uh, we'll share your thoughts on the show. And please visit songtalk.ca to see the show post for this episode, to find links to resources we mention, and to download lyric and chord sheets to follow along with the songs that we feature. And uh, we're happy to have uh, Greg back on the show today. Best known for his heartfelt love songs, songwriter Greg Wired is about to surprise his audience with Guns and Money, a song that delves into significant global issues with a guitar-heavy rock sound. Guns and Money takes a more serious and thought-provoking direction than previous songs, taking inspiration from society's obsession with wealth and weapons that often overshadows essential human concerns. Written, produced, written, recorded, produced, and mixed by Greg, Guns and Money is now available on all streaming platforms. Welcome back to Song Talk Radio, Greg. Oh, thank you for having me again. Awesome to have you back on the show again. Um, Let's start the show tonight by listening to your new song. This is Guns and Money by Greg Wired. Truth, the proof, the roof over their heads. So it's 
very cool. Such yeah. a such a wonderful um, use of the pre-chorus. Pre-chorus is very pre-chorusy. Oh, thank you. The da, 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 da. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I like I like the now. What's that ending chord? Is that a is that oh, a six? What, what degree of the scale? It's just it's just a seventh, but it's, it's it? sort of a yeah, it's sort of an unresolved seventh. You know, it would it should go to the the G yeah. minor, but it just stays on the D seven at the end. I always like those kinds of endings. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of a, I just noticed I do this a lot where, where I put the beginning. I kind of do bookends as the beginning and end because I kind of started mm. with that, so I ended with it again without realizing, you know. But yeah, I, you just I left this hanging on the end, right? Yeah, oh. I could have gone. Da -da, boom, but um, I just, yeah, exactly. Come back yeah. to the one, but yeah, yeah that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. So would would you say so? Given given your preamble and everything with this song, would you is this like the very first protest? politically charged protest song you've ever written or something I, yeah <laughs> I, 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 I don't think you're earlier like you've been on the show a couple of times now i don't think any of your earlier stuff was kind of came, came across as particularly like light and fluffy or anything i don't like know that. i always thought i i was trying i suppose i was deliberately trying to get away from writing love songs because i you know i mm. had a i had a penchant for doing that at one point and i thought i, I got to try some other things and even this song started off just with the line you know lying all the time and i was thinking i was it was going to be a girl that lied all the time you know, right that was, oh, okay because uh, i just said lying all the time and then it was it was sort of in the news cycle of um you know not to be named politicians um lying and and i sort of thought well you know maybe i'll just kind of subtly put it some some things I would say to this person if I if I had a chance, you know. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to keep it so it wasn't too obvious, you know. Didn't want to ruffle too many feathers, you know. I just 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 not sure how how to do it in a subtle way, you know. Yeah, yeah. You're not you're not uh, not dropping any names of anybody here. <laughs> yeah, but I but it's it it took the it took the fluffiness the, the initial fluffiness away from the song, which I wanted to do, you know. So I, that's that was why I kind of stuck with it. Did you start off with? Um... Did you start off with like a musical idea and then sort of come up with the subject, or was it the subject first or the lyrics first? It, it was a, it was that chord, the chord sequence, and then the idea of coming up with you know three different melodies over the same chord sequence. You know, so it's like the first oh. the first melody. It's always G minor, E flat, B flat, D seven the whole the whole way. The whole song. But, yeah. Oh, yeah, I never would have wow, cool! I never would have guessed and, that. And, See that's 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 good. That's kind of what I was hoping. The melody takes away. The from melody that. really the, the melody varies enough and and structurally changes enough that that it, you don't really linger on and that because you're. I also change the feel because the because the chorus the verse is just strummed held notes, the the pre-chorus is like kind of a reggae feel, and then the chorus is like the Nirvana, bolster wall kind of thing. You know, you know that's that's what I was trying to go for, and make them all m melodically different and. Um, you know, uh, stylistically different, so that you wouldn't notice that. And, and but are, are are the durations of the chord changes the same throughout? Like you yeah. don't double, you don't double time it in the chorus or anything like that. No, it's just it's it's a bar. It's always a bar G minor, so a bar, bar, bar B flat, bar D seven. And, and okay. I, I, um, the yeah, the bridge is different, but uh, okay, but that, yeah. Well, and your pre chorus, different. your pre choruses are different too, aren't they? No, because it's. Oh, really? So the choruses are the same chord yeah, progression as well. Or the, um, sorry, the pre chorus. The same yeah, chorus. It's just, it's just the feel difference. And, oh, and, nice. Uh, oh, I'm glad, I'm glad I uh, um, pulled that off because I, <laughs> I was trying to sort of pull that off in a way. This, this was know. actually our, our we, we do a songwriting challenge on the podcast every year, invite our listeners to participate in everything. Yeah. And, yeah. and this was our challenge a couple of years ago is write a song where the chord progression never changes. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. Because right. I, I, I usually don't do that, and and yeah. this was like something I wanted to to do, and then make it less monotonous. You know, that was that was it. Like it would it mm -hmm. wouldn't have been as as interesting if it was all no. Yeah, and and that's one thing. When that certainly is something we discussed. Like, how do you make your chorus really pick up and and totally right. you pulled it off here? The the rhythmic changes, the melodic rising up of it the the triple rhyme at the top of the chorus is is fantastic oh, yeah, the, and especially because it's different both times like hate the bait the fate and the next time well, actually hate well, the bait it, the fate the, 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 the same yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, i like those i like those three three line things i do you know it's another thing i 
gets to picked up yeah. somewhere. And yeah, and it's really it's really cool Putin too because they're very consonant heavy word like they're ta ta ta. You get the yeah. you get the you get the percussiveness of that as well. Which yeah, because really I wanted cool. it to sound a bit you know ang- angry, you know, like mm-hmm. so, and and that's that those consonants, like you say, the consonants kind of get that sort of like you're in his face going poof, poof, you know, like Yeah. Yeah, and, and and that totally and that totally works. I mean, that's that that's your prosody one hundred and one, right? Like make the make it sound like it's like the lyrical mm-hmm. content. <laughs> Very so, cool. Because one of the challenges of doing um, a verse and a chorus with the same chord progression is is you know if you start off on the same note on both of them, it can be very samey. And, and one of the challenges I was doing was trying to find you know not this not the same note like at the chorus and. Sometimes yeah. doing the third ninth or the thirteenth or something. Would you know which note starts? Like, does it start on the? Well, actually, the the first starts on the on the second uh, scale, right? Cause da, 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 da. So it starts mm-hmm. on the two the two of, of the scale, and then the bridge would be um, the chorus, uh, da, 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 which is the mel- the tonic, and then I guess the chorus is the octave up tonic. Ah. So the so they're all yes, yeah, it's tonic low, tonic high, and then the second for the verse. But it's like, it's also the spread out notes, you know, da, 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 like instead of da 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 da, da you know, so so those those things are all different. I'm mm-hmm. sure I'm sure I must have studied that somebody else doing that and sort of picked that up because it's you know it's it, it's well, something it it, it, it sounds like it before. was very conscious and very deliberate and very you you thought about it and decided you can do it wasn't just. It, 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 I mean, it probably did just come out that way, given yeah. your your breadth of experience and how long you've been writing songs. It just kind of Maybe. happens that way. But it's something, yeah, you've heard and you've appreciated many times, I suppose. So, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I, I appreciate you uh, pointing these these little things out. And, and was was it was it um, was it a lot of editing in terms of like your 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 melodies are very strong, your lyrics fall into place, and they're very strong as well. Like what? How, how did the process go between mirroring the lyrics and the melody? Actually, uh, the, I had I had a, I had only the first verse for about a year. Like I didn't I didn't actually put oh. a, come up. I had to come up. You know the, the old second verse challenge. You know where do you mm-hmm. go for the first one? Um, but um, yeah, um, sorry, I, I forgot exactly what you asked me. Like how? Well, just, just in terms of like it, it, it's sometimes some things we can guess. With the songwriter or with the guest, how what came first? Like, or are they melody driven or are they lyric driven? Because one of them is oh, kind yeah. of not, some of them is kind of stronger than the other. But yours yeah, seems to be very well balanced. So I'm just wondering well, how, how much. I was, was, I'm just wondering how much of a struggle that was to get it to get those two things married up really well. Yeah, the the melody was the was the thing that came first, and and so mm-hmm. it was it was a question of um, coming up with these words. I I, I went. I actually went to a little cabin somewhere. Like it's one of those times when someone gives you their cabin to go and you, and you have to use it so you don't want to waste the time and i actually got something done because very often i don't and i <laughs> and i wrote you know i actually came out of there with with all these lyric, lyric ideas you know and, and forced myself to and, it, and yeah and it was just it was just you know like i think making a list of things that, that uh, a bad politician would would do you know like <laughs> and then the second verse is all the you know using every question word like what why where who you know, about something to do with him. Like, how do you mm-hmm. sleep at night? Why do you run a fight? You know, wh- when do you say something nice to somebody else? You know, so that that was like a laundry list of, of um, questions that you would ask somebody, you know, who, who lies a lot. So. Yeah, it's, um, I, I love how there is so clearly, each section is very clearly delineated. Mm. Um, it's very clear where the chorus is, with you know, it's um, where the pre-chorus is, you know, uh, where, where the verse is. And sometimes when you do a song with all the same chords, it can be hard having that delineation, and it just kind of, mm. and it gets kind of samey. And this is not a samey song at all. Yeah, I, I studied Max. I think Max Martin once gave a talk about, mm. you know. That, that same thing, you know, like if you listen to other songs, you know, the the the, the melody, verse melody will be whole notes or the next one will be high notes. And 
you know, like I think I, I probably subconsciously picked that up at one point because I, I thought, because I, I was so resistant to, to doing that in the first place. I thought, how boring using the same chords. But if you change the arrangement and the melody, you know, and a few things, you you could fool, you fool the brain, I guess. You know, it's it you take away that familiarity and and hide it somehow. So, so was, that, was, was that like a challenge you set up for yourself to say, I'm not going to change the chords or... Like where, where did that decision come from? Given that you normally don't do that, why 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 do that all of a sudden for the song? I I think it was I think it was to keep myself interested because I I was mm. finding it kind of kind of dull just playing those four chords over and over again. You know, like if if you're a guy in a bar just strumming a guitar and you don't have anything, you know, you can just sit there and play this song that's got the same four chords. It's never it never changes, and I didn't want it to have that feel. I wanted it to be. So, no, I, I, I get you mean you mean you you want to change the the rhythm and the thing, but but why did you decide to have four four chords repeating? Like why why didn't you just go with a different chord progression oh, in the chorus? Yeah, um, no, I guess I I guess I liked these three tunes that seemed to fit over the same chords, mm-hmm. and there wasn't any need, you know, I didn't have the need to sort of come up with other chords to make it sound to make it feel different. So you know, why, why not just keep them as they are? That, that's probably how it was. You know, sometimes you do, you, you play it over and over again. Oh, that's boring. I'm, I'm still doing the same chords. I should change that. You know, and that, that second rewrite didn't happen because I, because I, I must've thought, oh, it's, it's different enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. yeah. 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 Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. How, how, how much, how much editing did you do with this song? Was, was there much tweaking of melodies of, of lyrics um, after the first draft or? Um, I I know the bridge, the, the the bridge was was chopped up a bit before I got it the right length. You know, like I mean, you know, mm. literally going in on logic and kind of cutting and pasting sections around, and and then I think I took out two two bars. I, I was doing it longer, and then I went into the the bridge a bit quicker, and I I remember liking that that sort of quick mm-hmm. departure into the bridge. You know, without without doing a full eight bar passage before it, you sort of cut you sort of cut to it quicker. Yeah, yeah, because the bridge kind of hangs there, the rhythm drops out, and then and then you drop back into the chorus. You could almost insert a solo there because this the song is pretty short. This is like three minutes, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't. It's funny. Would, did you? I'm interested if he said. Do you think a solo would would fit in there? Like, no, I, I, I don't I, think. I don't think it needs it. I'm just saying you could have. Yeah, because know, cause it, it is a very tight song. Like the 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 chorus comes comes up. It comes up again. It comes up three times, relatively. Quick, they're not far apart. The chorus, yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's, it's, it's very, very, very tight. Song, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because it's funny. The, the decision to put a solo in is 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 often uh, it just needs it. You like you, you just can't. You, like I've got another song that I could not possibly have not have a solo. Well, the last mm. the last one I think I brought here that the suddenly mm. was all right that that needed a solo at that point, and I couldn't imagine doing anything else. And this song, I didn't have that. Is, is that just a feel thing for you just to feel like it needs a solo or is there something more yeah i think so maybe maybe because the, the verses are shorter in that one or something and mm. and less wordy i don't know and the, the, the i don't know I, I can't say why but i just didn't need i needed a solo there and i didn't need one here mm-hmm. uh, for, for right or wrong you know maybe it, maybe it could happen <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh yeah but, definitely yeah. Yeah. That's a great tune. Well, now, what do you plan on doing with this? Well, I'm I'm uh, promoting it on Spotify, like the other one. I've I've actually um, I've actually hired a company. Uh, there's there's a guy I follow on YouTube called Andrew Southworth. Uh, any I think anybody who's done any Facebook ads, I've, I've been doing a lot of Facebook ads to promote my song on on uh, Instagram. You know, like a, a landing page where people can go click on the the link and listen because it's it's hard. I find word of mouth is is hit and miss when it comes to Spotify. You know, like a, a lot of people don't have Spotify if, if they have Apple Music. So um, so to get people to, li- to, to listen to it, I've been I've been I've been pushing it on there. And, but you, and did, started, did you do like a digital distribution, like a distrokid or a thing like that? So it's kind of everywhere, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm using uh, Symphonic. Yeah, Funny. so it's, okay. it's on Tidal and all those all those places, but okay. by far the most listeners are on are on uh, are on um, uh, Spotify. Um, mm. But but what yeah, what I'm, my long term plan is is to is to just put um, songs out every six weeks or so. So I'll, I'll do another one, and I've got I've got twelve songs almost ready, 
Oh. And then and then to have a physical product at the end of that, I'd, I'd like to I'd like to put out a, a vinyl or, or a CD. Yeah. Are, are you also when when it comes together in an album? Are you all are you going to uh, put that digital as well, like on Spotify and stuff? Yeah, I mean, I, I would yeah. post it as a as a digital album, but also you know, I I think if people are familiar with the songs for for a year or so, you know, or have a lot of takes to get all the songs. They're more inclined to say, "Oh, I like that song. I'll buy that album that has those songs that I already know on it." You know, mm-hmm. so that could be a way to, to monetize it. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. I, I I did get annoyed a couple of years ago when a, a band that I follow and I'm, I'm really a big fan of they released a single yeah. on Bandcamp, and I was like, "Oh, this is this is fantastic!" and I and I purchased it right away on Bandcamp, and then less than a year later, they released an album on Bandcamp that had the same signal. So I ended up buying the album. <laughs> no, I'd already right. bought the single. I'm like, had I known it was going to be on the upcoming album, I just would have listened to it a couple of times, listened to it on Spotify, and then bought the album. Yeah. In the well, day. That's right. And uh, the, this, like, the model of the 60s was to have, you know, singles and albums, you know, you would mm-hmm. mix the two. And then I guess in the 70s and 80s, it, it began to put, you know, your hit single will go on your album as well. Yeah. And I, and I guess that's that's kind of stuck now. You know, it's there's no there's, well, there's hardly any sense of singles and albums anyway in the digital world anyway. So everything well, is kind of a single yeah. now. What's that? Mm-hmm. Everything's a single, really. That's it, and and you can have multiple versions. That, that's something I haven't even played around with. Is is um, a lot of people will do remixes of the same mm. song, and that will count as another another version. You know. Yeah, or, yeah. Fact, I know. Even when you when you upload to just to, to Symphonic, it's so common that there's actually a a, a, a box, you know, tick the box for version, you know, first version is so they kind of expect you to upload the same song several times Oh wow. you know, I, and I guess if you're trying to build up streams the more, you know, the mm. more volume the better right? So I know I know the new um, the, new, the new Peter Gabriel, he's got a oh, light yeah. side mix and a dark side mix for every single song Oh really? How are they different? One's, one's a little bit brighter, one's a little bit darker You mean like just Tone, tonal? Just just tonally, yeah. Like the instrumentation, I think, is by and large the same. Okay. For light side, dark side. I, I kind of prefer the light side mixes, to be honest. <laughs> but, no, I, I, I thought that was a brilliant, because um, he also he also uploaded them every full moon. That, that was the concept. Right, right. Every full moon, he would, up, he would upload one, I think, to both versions. And I, hmm. I went to the concert, and it was just brilliant. Oh, oh I can imagine. Were you there? Were you? <laughs> I haven't seen him since the up tour. I saw him twice on the up tour. That was twenty years ago. It was a great. It was, a great, it was such a great show. But yeah. but I, and I and I love this new the production on the new stuff is just amazing too. It's really really, mm-hmm. really it's just yeah. classic Gabriel. It's, it's cla- I mean he's got his he's got his dream team together with the Tony Levin and Manu Cache and Gary oh, Rhodes yeah. and all those guys. Like come on. <laughs> Yeah, but it's interesting seeing him do, you know, trying new marketing ideas, you know, like put a little bit out at a time. Don't don't give it all away quickly, you know, and use something like the full moon as your guide, you know. That's a great idea because he is an established artist. and He probably could, from a marketing standpoint, kind of phone it in and probably still get plenty of sales. But it's great to see someone in that position, you know, try new things and, you know, try to experiment with the, um, with the format itself. And he's, he's always been a, the kind of guy who well, pushes the envelope yeah. and he's more of an artist than, a, than anything else, yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, when you think about the, just the work that went into that show, I mean, every, every song had a, had a work of art, like a video art that was associated with it. So he's hired all these artists, you know, it's, he he anything but phones it in it's it's like everything is so much more work than it necessarily needs to be because he loves you can just tell he loves the work you know so. he, um did he buy ssl the company yeah the uh, the audio company i think i think he bought it didn't he i haven't i know that no don't know it's entirely possible i suppose <laughs> Like the, sound, the sound, the sound. SSL makes PA equipment, right? Or is it um, no, it's, yeah, mixing like boards? Mixing boards, and yeah, they're one of the big. Uh... Yeah, SSL console. Yeah, 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 yeah. And plugins. They make plugins now, and they're really good, actually. It's quite possible he did. Yeah, I, might might be good investment. I'm sure, I'm sure he's used the stuff. Back <laughs> oh, in the day that's true. Now, <laughs> uh, 
uh, yeah, in he, uh, 2005, Peter, musician Peter Gabriel and um, broadcast entrepreneur David Hinkle became the majority majority shareholders of SSL. Oh, and um, go, Peter. <laughs> 2017, um, SSL was acquired by the Audiotronics Group, while Gabriel became the major investor in the group following this transi- transaction. So I think he's still a major investor. So he's not like he owns it, but, you know, he probably gets it at cost, I would think. <laughs> what if he, if he can use other sound, sound boards now if he's going to get right. if, he's, if he's got an exclusive deal with them. He's not need anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't you dare use a Neve. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but I, I do. I look, I look to him as, you know, as somebody also, also who, who's aged very, you know, has managed to find a way to be relevant, you know, um, and, and still can still sing the same way. Oh, yeah. Into his uh, late 60s now, right? He's almost, I think. Oh, he's, more he's, than that, for sure. He's, he was, gonna, he was 20 in the late 60s. Yeah, I was thinking he's he must be over seventy, you know. And I'm sad, you know. It's sad when you compare with Phil with Phil Collins, you know, mm. the same same um, lifestyle and age, but just just a different uh, different outcome, unfortunately. Yeah. I don't think Phil uh, Phil Collins was like a, a heavy, you know, user of anything. He always seemed to be relatively level headed. I I think. What happened to him was he uh, he had a bad posture when he played drums. Oh, and I think over over the years, uh, with his back curled and drumming, if you, if you watch him uh, in the Christmas song, you know the. Uh, uh, did they know it's Christmas? Well, didn't know it was Christmas. Not we are the world. We didn't know it was Christmas. Um, yeah, he's he's he sort of le- leans very. It's almost like he's sitting in a car driving a car. You know, he's not mm. sitting properly on the stool i think over time that's what that's what uh, caused his injuries repetitive strain injuries and oh uh, dear so probably without you know doing anything chemical to his body he just he just uh unknowingly pu- pushed it too hard you know wow Jeez. so we gotta be we gotta be careful as we as we, as we age <laughs> yes definitely you have to use it because boy will you lose it and once you lose it it can be hard to get it back Oh, yeah. Not impossible, but definitely a bit of a challenge. So let that be a lesson to all you youngsters out there. Is um, yeah, yeah, you, you know, make some, be 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 thankful. I, I lost my voice for a whole uh, almost a year. I don't know if I told you that, but but I, it came back again, you know. And I really appreciated that. I had to have surgery to 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 get rid of the, the little polyp on the vocal cord. Nice. And uh, that and that was just from strain from straining from singing singing with bad technique. Okay, which, so it was it was something. Uh, you were doing yeah, <laughs> and I've ch- I've definitely changed. Um, I'm using more falsetto now. In in fact, a, a lot of these songs I'm I'm singing more healthily than I was before. Oh, so that's so interesting. Just from taking some lessons online and figuring out, you know, not not to push too hard when you hit those high notes, you know, or, or find, find other ways to, to get the high notes. Do you remember what um, lessons they were online or was it an instructor or? A... Actually, it was Berkeley. This is, this is during the pandemic. I, um, I, I, there weren't any teachers that you could see in person. And uh, I, I just found a lot of YouTube videos until I found somebody that I thought was speaking to what I was looking for. And it was a woman in uh, Berkeley College of Music called Jeannie Gagne. And uh, I did these two hour, I did these two hundred dollar one hour lessons with her, but they were worth every penny, you know. And she would say, "You're doing too much work, you know. You're 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 straining your face. You don't need to do that when you sing a high note, you know." And get, getting yourself out of the space of when you hit a high note, you have to move your body up. You you can move your body down and sing a high note, you know. Oh, and, really? Hmm. Yeah, and I, and I had a. Another friend who had had surgery, and she was saying, you know, your voice is never going to sound the same. And um, she was filling me with all this gloom and doom. And and it, it tu- you know, it turned out actually it, it it came back just just the same. And and I learned now not not to do the same habits. And I and I'm and I'm noticing the difference. You know, 
That's mm. extraordinary. You, you think you think you know a lifelong career musician. You, you know you got you know you know everything. <laughs> of course, <laughs> you know, no, it something. Is, right? It's a good, it's not, nobody knows as a child that there's such a thing as take, you know, you can take voice lessons for, to be in a, a choir or opera singer, but everybody should really take voice lessons if they're going to be a musician, a singer, just because there's things you don't necessarily take, get naturally that can damage your voice. And if you know early on, you know, you're, you're, you're that much further ahead. So I, if I can say anything to anybody out there who's thinking of, you know, being a rock singer and they're, in their early years uh look and look into lessons take it from me <laughs> you know yeah people always say oh if i take lessons um it's going to ruin my you know it'll ruin my artistic uh, events but it doesn't it just helps you get to where you want to go faster so it's yeah there's a sense that you're going to sell you're going to sound like an opera singer or you're going to be too or, or a show singer or something yeah but but really it's just tools that you could just because because when you're singing a song you're constantly switching between all these different methods right you know when you're singing a low note when you sing a high note you just you're, you're, you're not doing it all the same so you just get this little toolbox of techniques to switch into seamlessly you know if you know more so. yeah it's just it's just more knowledge base and there are more more stuff for you to use in your own in your own practice you don't have to sound like anything <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. that's very true <laughs> yeah and as i know and i Bring back to keep Peter Gabriel. He's somebody else who still who could still hit those notes, you know. So he's yeah, he's pretty remarkable. Yeah, that, that is true. A lot of these vintage acts, you you hear them now, and it's like they're not hitting the high notes the way they used to. <laughs> no, <laughs> dropping them down. <laughs> but who of us is? No, and and who are we to complain? <laughs> all right, I'm uh, I'm here in the band. I think uh, that's all the time we have on Song Talk Radio. Uh, special thanks to uh, Greg Wired, and of course, um, uh, once again, where can our listeners uh, hear your music again? Uh, I'm uh, my website is gregwired.com, which is G R E G W Y A R I D, and I'm on Spotify, I'm on uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, all those places. Same same name everywhere. So, uh, We'll be sure to send our listeners that way. And uh, we want to hear from you too. So uh, send your comments on Facebook or Instagram to at Song Talk Radio or send us an email feedback at songtalk.ca. Also be sure to check out our YouTube channel for live performance videos and full episodes and subscribe today to the Song Talk Radio podcast on your favorite podcast provider. You can find links to all the products, books, and web services we mentioned on the show on our resources page on the website. And please join us at our next monthly Song Talk meetup, whether you're in Toronto for our in-person meetups or anywhere in the world for our online meetups. It's free to join on meetup.com and free to attend. Bring a song and a lyric sheet and get constructive feedback from other songwriters. Stop by songtalk.ca for the link. You can follow me at neilmodi.com. You can follow Phil at philemory.ca. And Greg, what's your favorite social media channel? Where do you go the most? Uh, face, Facebook. Uh, music page. Facebook. Uh, Greg Wired Music. Alrighty. And uh, be sure to stop by the website, songtalk.ca, to browse past shows and find out how you can be a guest. Thanks for tuning in and keep, keep on, on writing. writing. Okay. Good night, everyone. Awesome. That was great. That was just just solid chunk of of, of great musical <laughs> knowledge, you know. And yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah it's great. Oh, thank you for letting me rant and rave and yeah, yeah, stuff. absolutely. Oh, okay. No, I really appreciate. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, yeah, for sure. Long, it, it, it was it was interesting what you're saying about Phil Collins because. Um, when in the the band I'm in, we used to, I played drum kit now, but before I was playing on a cajon. The little box, oh, yeah. little Peruvian box you sit on, right? And when I first started playing, I never, I had never played one before. And and our lead singers happened to have one, and I'm like, oh, let me back you up on this. I tried, just sort of figured it out myself, right? And I watched, I see, I seen a few other bands yeah. use it, and I was just, you know, 
taking up uh, picking up techniques from other players and stuff like that but because you're sitting on the thing and you have to lean over in order mm. to play it you you do arch your back quite a bit and and i found that the first few times i did you know especially like a 45 minute gig or something so oh man my lower back is just like right going out and then and then i i had the i don't know if i ripped this off of somebody else or i thought of it myself i don't remember but just tilt the thing back a few degrees yeah off the floor and then you're not hunched over as much oh, it's, just, right. it's a simple little thing but it yeah. makes all the difference when you're playing a long set that's a good point because I mean, we we worry about ergonomic keyboards with our fingers. Yeah, uh, you know, that that's that seems like a trivial thing. But this is like the same thing, yeah. magnified to a huge part of your body, right? So yeah, you do that mm. for years, years um, the wrong way. Yeah, you know, it's it, it multiplies. So yeah, yeah, it's 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 good. Yeah, it's stuff that you wouldn't think of. You know, mm. you know so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. A great thing that musicians should do, and and especially bands is just like perform we'll either do a rehearsal like a show or actually do actually do a show and actually just have one video camera in the center just like a static shot of the whole show because man mm. like what you think you're doing and what you are doing mm. are so totally different it's amazing <laughs> oh yeah yeah you yeah. know yeah very true, there's, very there's, true. There's a, you just reminded me of this i went to canadian music week this this year and there's a guy I got his, I bought his book, but he's, I forget his name, but he, he actually goes out and sees bands and then he, he was in a band, but he tells them how to fix their visual show, you know? Ah, so, right. so he did it with a, with a band on stage, you know, and just simple things you don't, you know, you think of all the rehearsal and getting all the stuff together and then you stand, you loiter on stage, you know, without any thought about who, you know, it's just simple things like. When the when the lead guitar player does a solo, you know he he walks forward. He, Everyone he walks back. He's in the. He said you always want to have someone in the spotlight at all times. Yeah. So when the singer gets the solo, the singer should back up. The singer, the guitarist should come forward, play play a solo, and then when he's finished, just turn around and walk away. Put you back to the audience and bring the singer up. You know, and we don't mm. think about all the the stream of different things happening on the stage. Yeah, you know, and like you say, uh, when you film yourself, you do What? A, why am I standing there, staring at the floor? You know, the whole time. And this, yeah, this looking. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be aware of that now. When in my band too, you know, like where, who's, 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 who's uh, featured at any given moment, right? Well, mm -hmm. and it's they always say like, um, if if someone is is highlighted on stage, like they're doing a lead, is the other people should look at them because that sort of directs. Humans will yeah, look where right. other humans look. It's like this, uh, yeah, you know. True. That's kind of what he was saying. Because yeah. where you look, the 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 audience looks where where the band is looking. You know, yeah. if they're looking at one other person, yeah. So it's uh, yeah. So doing this, it. although that's what shoegaze was. Shoegaze was shoegaze like thing, right. You know, shoegaze shoegaze thing. Just, <laughs> everybody's everyone just their issues. Well, because they were just kids, right? You know, it's uh, yeah. and they didn't know anything. They're all scared. So mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. at least back in the eighties, yeah. when you had all the big hair in front of your eyes, no one could tell. When you looked. That's right. You could, they couldn't <laughs> see your eyes to see if you were scared. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Even things like banter. Like I've been encouraging our lead singers. Like think about your banter the same way you think about your lyrics. You you oh, write yeah. it out. You know, you're you're basically reciting the same stuff. I saw I saw Blair Packham perform two times, relatively um, like within within a few weeks or months apart or whatever back before the pandemic or whatever. Right. Yeah. And I was amazed how almost word for word his banter was almost exactly I the know, same yeah. for every single thing. I was like, holy cow, he's rehearsed this, he knows it. <laughs> and, same and, and it works. Yeah, the it joke does. is just this long and that's it. <laughs> and you move just, on. Just right? change the name of the city. Yeah. yeah. yeah change the name of the city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello, St. Louis. Uh, Steve, it's Springfield. Yeah. 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 Now we all do that though. We all, we all fall into our little, uh, patter you know yeah uh, on the stage it's this human nature but mm -hmm. it's good it's good to be aware of it i guess right you know yeah well of course you know you're gonna you might be a musician but you're basically an entertainer yeah that's right so you do need to entertain yeah yeah, yeah i'm lucky yeah. i'm the drummer so i'm way in the back no one's watching me anyway that's right i don't have <laughs> to say anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, are, unless you're unless you're Don Henley or, or Phil Collins. Well, yeah, that's right. Don Henley or Phil Collins. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, double duty. 
All right. Well, we will uh, right. send you an email once the w- once the show goes live. Once it goes oh, up. Thank you very much. Thanks for taking the time to. Have yeah. Me on. Thanks for thanks for joining yeah. us again, Greg. It's great to see you. All right, and I'll I'll get my audio in. I'll, I'll get these next time. Right yeah. away. <laughs> no problem. No worries. Well, okay. Right. Have, have a great night. You too. Take care. See you soon. Yeah. Cheers. Bye.